So that was some of them. Well, when you were working as a rigger in Missoula, did you rig down on some of the other bases too? No. Yes, so how, how, how did the rigging operation work in Missoula? So what happened when the parachutes came back? First thing, when the parachute came out, went into the tower. You flaked it out, looked at it, so forth, tagged it. And if there were rips, tours, or anything else, and you made an estimate how long to repair. Any parachute had the estimated 40 hours repair was made a cargo chute or just ash can. Uh, otherwise, uh, the chute went into a bin after being dried and so forth, flaked, and it went uh, to be rigged or repaired. We had several sewing machines. We had several zigzag machines, domestic type things, and uh, we had a two needle machine and a four needle machine. And a thumper. The thumper, the needle is like a big nail. You could uh, stitch through a half inch plywood with that thing. And the flywheel took two hands to stop it. Once you get going, you want to stop it. Took two hands on it to stop the damn flywheel because you whoop, whoop. Uh, the four needle machine was for replacing lines. And the bad news on that, if you were sewing in a new line, and your bobbin run out, you had to tear out all the stitches and start over. The bobbin had, had uh, your stitching had to be continuous with no breaks, such as uh, with the bobbin running out. Your domestic machines uh, were patching, really just patching up, uh, sewing. And most of, most of us spent time on that. Uh, I never operated the, the four needle machine or the two needle machine. I spent most of my time on the the domestic. And you had a treadle, power treadle, you put your feet on, uh, and so like held, and here you had a, a lever to raise up the foot. So it was you know, so quite efficient. Jack Nash was our teacher, I guess. Al Hammond was also the foreman of the law. And anytime you did a, a reserve shoot, since I was not a master rigger, Hammond or Nash had to come by and with lead seal and seal it with their with their seal. The main canopy, they can come over and take a look at it and say fine. But the reserve chute, and reserve chutes, as I recall, after 30 days had to be broken down and repacked. So and then and then sealed by a master rigger. Yes. And they were certified by the FAA. Whatever certification. Yeah. You know, and that's it. Let's see how they had a thread go through and put the, the uh, squish it down so you could always see it that there was a seal there. Yeah. How many parachutes do you think you rigged? Oh, Christ. I have no, I have a, we all had to keep a logbook. If I had my logbook, I could tell you. I don't know, because that was eight to five. Well, how did you, how did you get into that game? Was that just because you were around the, the depot? Yeah, Maybe yeah around the depot. And, uh, I don't recall the, all the circumstances, but I know I ended up as a rigger. Uh, and that, and like John. John was married, that's one reason he was there. John. Uh, oh, Christ. Oh, McKinnon. Yeah. And uh, so most of the guys were in there. That, and I was also married in my second year. So I was actually the second year. Uh, being a married man uh, was one of the reasons I, I would guess. Yeah. Where being set out in project. So you have you jumped four years? Sixty one through sixty five. Five years. Five years. Five seasons. Five seasons. So what happened after that? Oh uh, well one thing uh, in sixty late sixty five I took a transfer from fire control over to OEO. What's that? Off the economic opportunity or job corps. And being an educator I had a BA at that time. I promised the GS9. I had the GS6 smoke jumper going over there, transferred to OEO, and I was getting per diem and whatnot being paid on the GS6 smoke jumper. And it took forever uh, uh, for the regional office to process, process my papers. Then they uh, said, John, your appointment, career appointment with the GS6. This qualifies you for being a GS9. You cannot be promoted more than two calendar years in a, in a year. So, six twenty to nine, you can. 
we don't use wage board, so they're GS7. I, could, I, f I forgot how many RAM specs they gave me. And uh, it took them six months to process me, give me from power control over to OEO. And suddenly I realized, Jesus Christ, to get my nine, I still had to leave. Otherwise, I still had to uh, uh, wait another year. So I took a civil service exam for prisons. And jolly, uh, I, could, I could go to jolly, that's why I was on the board as a GS9. But that made no difference to the Job Corps. And I said, screw this stuff. So uh, my wife and I, and we packed up. At that time, we had a child and went to California. Oh, I dropped by Missoula at the base. And I said, John, we got a position for you. What's that? You could be foreman uh, at the East Force uh, helicopter. Oh, no, no, helitack uh, ground crew. You know, at that time, they just formed me as the ground crew. You had a regional fire crews? Mm hmm. Yeah. And I said, What's that entail? Well, you're just in time to be part of the construction. You go up there and supervise all the construction, the tents, and so forth. And there would be a seven, but we'll get you a nine. But thanks, but no thanks. So I went to California and got a teaching job in Mountain View, California. Stayed there uh, one year teaching, and at that time I was active in the curriculum. We, uh, the Santa Clara County, at that time, they used the term adoption, adopted the Hardcore Price Science Program for all schools in Santa Clara County. I was on that committee, and I had I worked with the consultants of Hardcore Price. That convinced me that's the way to go. So after my one year, I uh, applied to uh, three companies, Scott Forsman's major publisher, as Wesley and Silver Dead. Scott Sporting said, John, we have an opening in Utah, but you're not LDS. Uh, as Wesley said, John, we got a place for you in Missouri. He said, thanks, but no thanks. And Silver said, we have a job in Montana. I'll take it. So I ended up coming back home to Montana with uh, that company. I was with them for ten and a half years. I left them, uh, as a manager at that time, I left them and joined another company called Baker & Taylor, the largest North wholesaler in North, book wholesaler in North America. Of books? Mm -hmm. And also uh, started the Can Canada. I was their original manager. And at that time, I think my budget, sales budget was like 43 million, something like that. And we took on Canada. And at that time, we were doing uh, less than a million dollars in Canada. And we had a rep by Ed, and uh, suddenly uh, the Canadians found out they could buy our books, so our, our wholesale operation, 50% less than they had uh, they paid up there. So our sales went from less than a million to five million. My budget went from 43 or 45 million to 50 some million. And about that time, we had a falling out. I had a falling out with my with director of marketing. And so I chose to leave. Uh, so I joined another company, yeah, McMillan, a major company, and they moved me to, to, to uh, Olympia, Washington. And uh, I was offered uh, stay with them uh, to go back in management. I was under bricks. They had uh, Washington and Idaho as my territory on the bricks, which was fine. And Montana, I guess. And uh, about that time, Houghton Mifflin called me, my former, one of my former managers, uh, said, John, I'd like to go back home to Montana. We got a place for you. So I said, sure. What they could give me a, a price, and uh, so I told the company, uh, Scott, or uh, Macmillan, what it was, that we'll match it or beat it. Beat it. No, John, I said, oh my God. And I talked to the president of the company, I said, thanks Jack, but I, 
I'm, I want to go home. He said, okay. So I, I really did burn the bridge there. So I came back to Montana and Great Falls and talked to, I still had a lot of friends here who were in book business. I said, John, you really don't want to spend your time in Great Falls. It's hell is a place because of the State Department. So I, I asked Sherm, uh, my boss, is all right? He said, absolutely, John. And so I moved to Helena, and in Helena ever since, from '85. Well, you mentioned.